Welcome, happy Tuesday to everybody. <laughs> I'm Coach Michael Burt, the Super Coach. Welcome to the Super Coach Show. Follow me at Michael Burt. Follow Brock Patterson, the Optimizer, at Brock Patterson. We come to you every Tuesday, 3 p.m. on Whatever It Takes Network. We really do three things. We multiply your life, we multiply your money, and we multiply your business. And like a good super coach does that tries to get you to superhuman levels, we always find the kryptonite in your life. And that's the sure. one thing that's holding you back. Today we got an exciting topic for you. We appreciate you watching us every single week on Wit Nation. Mm. Uh, we have, if you haven't noticed, one of the most viewed shows. Yes. One of the top five viewed shows on the Whatever It Takes Network. That ain't bad no. for 25, 26 shows. No. And I think content is king. I think good, relevant content every week that we bring to you to multiply your life, multiply your money, right. multiply your business. We also believe everybody needs a good coach in life because a good coach will have conversations with you you don't want to have. They'll make you do some things you don't want to do. They will help you become something you didn't think you could become. And that's what we're going to do today. Now, today's topic, it's a hot topic, and that hot topic is real simple. Are you out there... Working for a monster. <laughs> now, I want to take people back just a little bit because the word monster has a negative connotation for a lot of people. Right. But about six to eight to nine months ago, oh, yeah. you found a def definition in the dictionary yes. and you came to me yes. and you said, I think you're a freaking monster. Yes. And I've we been produce calling you other that. monsters. Yep, and right. you found a definition of a monster. That said this, what is a monster or monster producer? Well, you know, a monster by definition, if you look up the true definition, it means legendary creature. Mm. It blends multiple skill sets. So that's what our monster producers are. They're legendary creatures that blend multiple skill sets to dominate a market. Think about sales, service, uh, leadership. Look at all the skills to become a monster producer. And when you think monster producer, if you're out there and you're working... For one right. of these monsters. This is where it could get just a little bit hairy. Because here's what I... When I wrote this article, this blog, that's at CoachBert.com called Working for a Monster. I said, we define a monster as a legendary creature that combines multiple skill sets to dominate a market. Monsters are typically type A, firstborn, this is me, Leo... High D on a disc profile off the charts, okay? Here, here's what I'm saying, man. They're psychopathic. They're, they're serial. Yeah. They're crazy. They, yeah. they, they, they have some type of internal drive to Different. take this thing all the way. They're great at taking charge. They want to dominate. They stay up all night in a crazed, obsessed frenzy to win and produce. But here's the deal. They usually produce monster numbers, yes. right? Now... What they many times are not is great at leading other people. They're selfish by nature, they're self-absorbed, they're narcissistic, and they're so focused on the end Result. that they see others many times as a hindrance mm -hmm. or slowdown right. to their progress. Now, the challenge is real simple. The challenge is that this self-absorbed, narcissistic person is so focused on the end that they sometimes are willing to give up the means. They don't care about the means, True. right? True, yeah. And so yeah. this this is important, right? Because of their drive and their pure ambition, this is where this comes. They may or may not make good leaders, and many times they have expectations that are simply unreasonable. They're through the roof. Mm. They can be incredibly hard to please. Right. They, and they sometimes create as much dysfunction as anybody in the organization. So here's my question. Sound like... You? <laughs> now, I tweeted out just a second ago to my folks down there at the Wit Nation and Grant Cardone's office, hey, what's it like, Sherry, at Sherry Success? <laughs> what's it like, Rob S right. uh, Sislos? What's it like, Jerry Glant? What's it like, all hey, working for a monster? Right. And at Grant Cardone, because we know the guy's a monster, right? So here's the thing. Rumor has it that famed motivational speaker, this is a rumor, mm. Tony Robbins, Anthony Robbins, walk on fire, Got a new book out that's really good. He fired 43 assistants in one single year. That's almost one per week. Now, so who is the person who's going to tell Tony that it could be him that is the problem, <laughs> right. right? 
Now, he's built over right. a $400 million company, and he'll turn around and tell you that his mindset, his drive, his motivation, his ambition is what actually has propelled him from an overweight nobody living in an 800-square-foot mm -hmm. apartment to one of the world's biggest strategists and top motivators in the world. So I've been on both sides of this equation. Right. I have worked for monsters. I've been the monster. I counsel people who work for monsters, and I counsel the monsters. So what's the most mm -hmm. interesting part of this, Brock, for a person out there who is saying, I'm that monster? Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a part we're going right. to speak to today. What do you do as a monster? And I think it has a lot to do with who you hire and who you surround yourself with that gets you. But but there's also the other side of the coin. Right. The people that have to work with the monster. What's the most interesting part to you? I think there's three options, really four four possible options when you're looking at this dynamic. Number one, I think you embrace what, what Cardone, I think he does well, extremely well. He highly incentivizes his team basically because he's got a high price point for his product. Uh -huh. So they're incentivized by big numbers, four or five digit commissions. Uh -huh. So it's okay. You know, look, I'll deal with dealing with a monster all day long if I'm going to get paid. Uh -huh. The second thing is you can just embrace that you're going to have turnover. Yes. You just embrace it. And it's going to happen. I think there's positive and I think there's negatives. I think employees are assets to companies. So you either have to incentivize Embrace turnover, or I think you really have to look at internships and apprenticeships. So when you think about this, there's lots of angles we're going to play today. We're going to look at, how, can you change the monster or not change them? Are you going to bitch about them or work with them? Uh, are, you, are you going to accept them? Or are you going to critique them every day? Because at the end of the day, here's what I would tell you. Monsters are people, too. Mm -hmm. Monsters are people. they got feelings. They've got insecurities. <laughs> they've got challenges. And, and I think a lot of people look at monsters with this expectation that, man, they can't do anything wrong. They're so driven and so focused and so on fire that they're like superhuman people. Right. But at the end of the day, even the monsters need reinforcement. We're going to look at how to use this experience, if you're working for a monster, as a learning laboratory. Right. To suck out everything you can as a person that's working for this person. Mm. So here's the first thing I would tell you in the first segment you got to understand one thing out of the gate when it comes to working with a legendary creature that has some big engine. Mm -hmm. We did a show on this in the past because right. you can't buy the engine. If you're working with somebody who's got a big engine that you can't buy, the first thing you got to understand is you are never going to change the mm. monster. You may slightly modify their behavior. Right. You may influence them just a little bit. But when it comes to changing them, here's what you have to decide. you got to make up your mind. Are you going to work with them or are you mm. going to work against them? Are you going to go to work and with work with the flow mm -hmm. or are you going to work against the flow and against their mojo? Because when you work against them, guess who loses? You mentioned the word turnover. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The reason yeah. there's so much turnover is because when people come to work for a monster, the monster says, look, baby. This is working, get on board, or get out of the way. There's a lot of pink slips and a lot of turnover when you work for a monster. Okay, so you got to make up your mind if you're working with one right now. Are you going to look at their quirks? Are, are, are they going to drive you to go somewhere else? Or are you going to buckle down? Because in all my years of right. coaching monsters, I've never seen a monster change very much. Well, let me, let me interject because I want to ask you. You can talk to yourself and, and to the other monsters. So if we preach and coach, you know, kind of out in the industry, change, mm -hmm. why is the monster why are they why can't why don't they have to change the monster has made up their mind that their way works and usually it's because they've got some level of right. success and because of that level of success i mean i can imagine going to tony robbins and say man you're the problem you went <laughs> right. through 43 assistants if that's true right you're the problem but then the other side of me is like look man you, you built a 400 million dollar company what you've done's work you're an international bestseller you've become the, one of the biggest names in the world hey right. who am i to tell you that you need to change. Sure. And I sure. think that's the big problem. So let me give you a little bit of kryptonite as we end this segment because this is the one thing that's probably going to keep you from doing everything. Here's the deal. You made up your mind that you're going to bitch about the monster <laughs> versus working with the monster, right? And here's what that would look like. You go home and tell your spouse or significant others, oh, I just wish my boss would change. <laughs> oh, I can't believe they said this. Oh, I can't believe they would have the audacity to do that you got to make up your mind. You're either going to bitch about them or work with them. Because here's the deal. When you sign them to be on somebody else's team, guess what you got to do? you got to play by their rules.
You know, when I've worked for other people in my life, I didn't always like the rules, mm -hmm. but it was their team, and I could complain about them or I could work with them. When we come back in segment number two, here's what we're going to be talking about. Many times it's the monsters that move the world forward. Yeah. So when should we talk to them and try to, you know, influence them? Or when should we just say, hey, it works, it's proven, let's buckle down. You're right. watching The Super Coach. I'm Coach Michael Burt, and this is Brock Patterson. Hey guys, Coach Michael Burt here. I believe everybody needs a coach in life, and that's why I'm inviting you to join me in the Big Apple, baby. The Monster City on the Planet, New York City, April 17th and 18th. Spend two days in an immersion type experience with me at my Monster Producer Summit. I'm going to teach you the seven frameworks of a monster producer. I'm going to teach you how to take monster action, a monster explanation of services, monster selling system, how to get monster attention, how to keep your monster swag, and ultimately how to build a monster enterprise. For $499, join me at the Sheraton New York City Times Square for two days, eight hours. Spend some personal time with Coach you're serious about being a legendary creature this year that dominates every field by combining multiple skill sets. Go to CoachBurt.com or email us at info at CoachBurt.com to sign up for $4.99, two days with me. This will be a monster experience. Hey guys, welcome back to the Super Coach Show. I'm Coach Michael Burt. Follow me at Michael Burt on the Twitter, Facebook, oh, search Twitter. Coach Michael Burt. Brock Patterson, at Brock Patterson. If you're not joining me in New York City, the monster city of the world, <laughs> two days, eight hours. We work hard. We play hard. I'm going to teach you how to be a legendary creature. That includes sales systems, how to get monster exposure. I'm going to show you how to use our new planners that are out that have a book to go with them. You can get those oh, yeah. at CoachBert.com. But if you've not signed up for our Monster Producer Summit in New York City, something's wrong with you, oh, man. It's life changing. April. It's going to be powerful. And the reason I chose New York City because the Big Apple. Oh, yeah. Energy, baby. Energy. Monster producer. We appreciate all the people that watch us out there every week. We are one of the top five most watched shows on the Whatever It Takes Network. That means a lot to us because we bring great content. We every bring the week. heat. We define a monster as a legendary creature that yes. combines multiple skill sets to dominate a market. Now, today's topic is what's it like to work for a monster. Mm. Now, give me, Brock, some some attributes because you've worked with some monsters. Right, right. Give me and the viewers some attributes of working with the monster. Like, what are characteristics of these big time monsters? The, I mean, most of them have a gear that that we don't have. I, I don't have it. I wish I did. You know, there are times where I have spurts where I see that gear, but they have a gear uh, that most people don't have because they're wanting to reach. You goes, it goes back to what you said about results. They see an ending or a result so vivid in their mind that they're going to work to get there. So they kind of start to, uh, I mean, they stay very focused. Um, sometimes it's hard to get their attention because they are so focused. So you really have to look at, you know, how are you going to influence them? How are you going to talk to them? You share ideas. If it's really good, they'll come back to you. You're real great about this. You know, if I give you a great idea... You may you may hear it, but you may come back to me a week later and say, you know what, I heard you the other day, and this is what you said. Yeah, and what's happening, and, and I would say one of the world's hardest people to get their attention is Grant Cardone. Yeah. I mean, trying to keep his attention because he's a monster. You're right. And so if, you're, if, if, if it's Lauren and she's got an idea or you got an idea, I'm moving at such a pace right. that you really have to sell the idea to me. Yeah. And I don't, a lot of times I get it, I process it, I think about it, I come back to it. Right. So a big lesson is this. When you work for a monster, the concept is actually called consequence-based decision-making. It's where when you sell an idea up the chain to the mm -hmm. monster, you actually need to do all of the work of thinking of the good side and the mm -hmm. bad side of the idea. Right. You go to them and you say, look, if this works, here's what could yeah. happen. If it don't work, here's what could happen. Right. And because the monsters are moving so fast, they get paralyzed. Yeah. It's like they only have so much bandwidth in a day. So if you're mm. working for this monster, here the characteristics, Brock's right, they're moving fast. Right. They have a stronghold. I yeah. think about when we did the show, uh, The Billionaire Blueprint. Right. 
the, the, the billionaires have a vision. They called it empathetic imagination. They right. had a vision of something that would affect masses of people, and they didn't major in the minors. They stayed focused on where they were going. They didn't right. catch, you know, we hear it called white noise. The monster <laughs> is moving at such a pace. They do not have time for drama. Well, and, and you know, and this is where, see, this is where I think for if you're working for a monster or if you are the monster, the monster is mo- more, than, more than likely, probably not always, but more than likely at high D, right? Yes. The monster needs an I, yes. right? an influencer that's there to ultimately build relationships because what the, what the high D and monster's not is great at relationships. That's right. Because they're moving so fast, they're trying to remove distractions. So if you've got an eye that can influence and build those relationships, that's what's going to solidify that for you to, uh, you know, to build customer loyalty. Well, when you think about it, IDs, you said they're not very sensitive. Mm-hmm. They're not really relational. You know, I tell people my concept of life coaching is suck it up. You know, get get <laughs> get over it. You know, get up, get keep going. Right. That's that's my definition of life coaching. I don't spend a lot of time hugging and loving and mm-hmm. you know because it's just not part of my personality. And I remember doing a disc profile once with a disc profile expert, and I got done, and I said, why am I like this? <laughs> and I'll never forget what he said. It is what it is. Yeah. I wouldn't spend all my time trying to figure yeah. out. This is who you are. Right. You are a high D, type A, Leo, firstborn. This is who you are. This is who you're going to be your whole life, right? If God was giving you, say, he gave them all to you, didn't he? He gave them all to you, He said, here, I D. Here's the monster, okay? (laughs) Now, here's the deal. Here's here's what you got to know about monsters. Many times, it's monsters that move the world forward. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, monsters have drive and ambition. They create jobs. They make money for companies. They they drive new customers. They solve problems. Right. A lot of monsters take a stand. They take a very strong stand, right? You may not like their style. Right. You may not like their methodology, okay? You may not like any of this stuff, but but here's the deal. Many times, monsters get monster freaking results. Mm -hmm. It's why they act the way they do. Think Nick Saban at Alabama. Right. Now, they got a lot of rules I've heard about Nick Saban, and I've heard this from multiple people. Number one, when he was with the Miami Dolphins, they, they said he had these rules. Number one, you could not speak to him unless spoken to. Heard that. You yeah. couldn't look at him unless he looked at you. Now, that will only work in <laughs> one environment when you're winning. Yes. The minute you stop winning, then then your hind end is out the door, and you talk to all, but he right. has been able to get results, okay? Many times, I have also found this. Mm. It takes a certain personality type to work with the monster. Mm-hmm. Right. They must possess lots of emotional intelligence. Okay? They must, uh, lots of mental toughness, very disciplined approaches, mm-hmm. and they must understand the primary language of the monster, which is results. Mm-hmm. I remember when Coach Insel used to say, don't tell me about the baby pain, just show me the, <laughs> sh- show me the baby. Don't right. tell me about the labor right. pains, just show me the baby. How important is it, Brock, that, that personalities... That if you work with a monster, you have emotional toughness, right. results oriented. I mean, how important is that to keep in a fluid relationship? I, I think it, I don't think it matters if you're a monster or not. I think that there's got to be, you've got to establish on the front end kind of who you are. I think you say the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, this is what it is. I'm this way because this is what I'm chasing. And I think if you're up front about what your goals are, what your results are, what your expectations are, nothing is hidden. Because, you know, we're hoping to be on uh, The Art of Charm yes. coming up. Yes, And they talk about covert contracts, mm. where it's this secret contract that I've got with you. So I've got a secret contract with Lauren. She doesn't know that I have the contract. Mm-hmm. But if she doesn't live up to the expectations, then ultimately, you know, shame on her. Well, mm-hmm. I think that happens in those relationships. I do, too. And, and I will tell you from personal relationships with monsters, I have seen monsters turn on people yeah. very quickly i have seen monsters be relaxed 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 and when the monster relaxes other people believe they can relax right and then i've seen at at a moment's notice with nothing something set that monster off and then they just go batshit crazy right and it's like they here's one thing i know about a monster 
they have the ability to to turn it off and turn it on. Mm -hmm. And they may turn it on at dinner. They may turn it on at breakfast. Right. Their minds are is like a switch that's going like this. So maybe one minute they're relaxed and they're personable and they're having fun. And then it's like, bam, it's business. Right. Now, I think that makes it hard on the people working oh, with the monster because they, they're always on guard. They're yeah. always on guard. And I've seen this happen many, many times. Let me give you a little kryptonite on this one. This is the one thing that will hold you back when it comes to kryptonite in your life. You go to work and you try to find fault in the monster. Right. Because, you, trust me, guys, you will find all kinds of fault in the monster. Because remember, although we put them up on pedestals <laughs> as these legendary creatures, they also are just people. Mm -hmm. And they have faults. They have insecurities. They have lack of confidence. And and when in moments of weakness, they make poor decisions, okay? Many of them are impulsive. Mm -hmm. You know, high, high, high D type A, they're impulsive. They make decisions fast that are not rational. Mm -hmm. Right. They make right. impulsive right. decisions, okay? When we come back in segment number three, here's what we're going to talk about. One thing I know about monsters is they hate one thing. Come back in segment three. You're watching Super Coach and find out what that one thing is. 15 is the year of the monster. I'm talking about a legendary creature that combines multiple skill sets to dominate a market. You see, I got a new coaching program, and I'm looking for people who want to have a monster year. Once a month coaching program for three hours with other like-minded monsters in a structured environment with key measurable outcomes and lots of accountability. You see, the monster coaching program is coming and we've already got 22 monsters signed up. Will you be in the class? Are you somewhere else in the country? No worries. We'll be live streaming this with workshops every month online. You can come into Murfreesboro, Tennessee, where our monsters will be every single month for three hours. We also have two, count them, two destination summits, one in New York City in April and one in Cabo St. Lucas in the fall and in a big celebration. If you're interested in being a monster, come on and join us. You get the Monster Producer Planner, you get the book, you get the app, and you get me coaching the heck out of you to be a legendary creature that combines multiple skill sets to dominate a market in 2015. Go to monsterproducer.com. Welcome back to the Super Coach Show. We multiply your life, multiply your money, and multiply your business. We appreciate the thousands of people that are downloading our podcast on iTunes, the Super Coach Show with Michael Burt. You can listen to that every single week. I'm a big podcast guy. Oh, I am too. I was just on the phone last night with Jordan Harbinger, Harbinger, yes. who has the art of charm, and I will be on that podcast. Thanks to Brock reaching out to him, he had some hard questions for me, <laughs> but uh, but I will be on the art of charm coming up pretty soon in the next couple of months. So be on the lookout for Coach mm. Bird. The Super Coach Podcast comes out every single week, and if yeah. you're out there in the world, listen to it, man. Let it right. get you jacked up. Listen to it when you're walking, when you're running, when you're in the gymnasium. That's what I do a lot. Absolutely. And and this is where you can consume all kinds of content. Now, the Monster Producer Program, if you're out there and you're interested in becoming a monster producer, then there's two things you can do. You can join me in New York City in the Big Apple at the Sheraton New York Times, New York City's Times Square. That's mm. it. On April 17th and 18th, email us at info at coachbert.com or call our office and say, I'm in, baby. 499 bucks. Two days with me. That's it. Personal time. Have dinner with me. Have dinner with Lauren K. Hudgens. See what's going on out there in the world. Mm. Secrets of a successful single mom. If you're out there in the world, join us. And if you want to get really coached, if you're serious or serial <laughs> about being a monster, serious. go to monsterproducer.com and sign up for Monster Producer and get monthly coaching from me, we've got about 25 monsters in the class from all over the country. You can do that online or in person. Today we're talking, <laughs> today we're talking what? Working for a freaking yes. monster. Monsters are a legendary creature that combines multiple skill sets to dominate a market. Monsters are not normal. Monsters take it to some superhuman level. Yeah. Monsters have a big engine. Monsters are difficult to deal with. We figured out monsters can flip it on and off mm -hmm. just like this. They're, the monsters right. are on edge, man. Right. They're psychotic. You know, you go to you go to the bookstore. I don't know why they got this over at Barnes and Nobles, but you walk in the door, look to the right. Very first book they got on sale is um, the Sociopath Next Door. <laughs> the Sociopath Next Door. Are are monsters sociopaths? No. Nah. Because not all sociopaths. No. Are killers. No. A small percentage of sociopaths are killers, but but 
aren't all sociopaths, killers, sociopaths are sociopaths, aren't they not <laughs> aren't they not great at manipulating? Oh yeah. Aren't they great at convincing? Mm-hmm. Aren't they great at flipping things around? Right. So so the downside of a monster is a cray cray, man. They're crazy. Yes. Now you gotta know this going into working with one. Right. But here's the deal. A lot of your big time producers, I mean, I wonder what it'd be like working for Mark Cuban. Sure. What would it be like working for Grant Cardone? What would it be like working for Tony Robbins? What would it be like working for T Bone Pickens? Now let me, all right, let me stop you there because this is good. This is good. Yeah. Is it better? It, would it be better to work for them because they're at a league that is reserved for the select few? Mm-hmm. Meaning, if you're a hundred thousand dollar business and you're a monster, are you going to be able to get away with the same things that a Tony no. Robbins? No, you're not. So how how can someone that's not at that level, do that. Well, you know, what, what do you think? What well, I think in, I think the proof is always in the pudding, you know, is that either you're the real deal or you're not. The reason people can get away with this behavior of being so driven and focused is for one reason, results. Mm-hmm. They speak right. the language of results. Now, let me give you some figures that will blow your mind. And I heard this straight out of Vern Harnish's mouth. Less than 4% of small businesses in the country break the million-dollar threshold. Right. Less than 12% of people out there in the world make more than 100000 in personal income. Mm-hmm. Out of the 28 million small businesses in the world, 21 million of those have only one employee. So they can be crazy and a monster with themselves. Right, right. Now, when you start building a team, this is where it gets difficult. And so here's what I know monsters hate. One thing, they hate excuses. They see excuses as weakness. And so here's what they, the only thing, only thing a monster wants to know is you get it done right. or not. They do not care many times about the means mm. in which you go about it. Lauren and I have had this talk before, who's my personal assistant, number two. And I said, I don't care how you get us from point A to point B, mm-hmm. but we have to get these results, okay? Right. So don't spend any of your time, if you work for a monster, trying to justify or obfuscate around your performance as this will only dig you deeper into a hole. A monster will actually uh, accept you more if you just be honest. I dropped the ball. I didn't get it done. There is no excuse. Because if you own your results, both positive and negative, you know, I've heard a lot of people say, you know, if they speak the language of results and I didn't get any sales, Having a salesperson tell me just just the other day they hadn't got any sales in the last couple months, so that so the, the monster wasn't paying any attention to them. But when they got sales, <laughs> the monster pays a lot of attention. You right. know why? It's the language of results. Sure. If you study the five uh, the five love languages, I'm so disappointed. That Chapman never wrote a book for workplace <laughs> because th- one of the one of the languages would be what results, right. affirmation, uh, status. Because status is important to a sure, monster. Sure. Elev- you know, we teach in person of interest. What I will teach on Art of Charm is how to be a person of interest, right. which at the end of the day is about becoming the celebrity in your space. It's about elevating. Okay. So, so here's the deal: monsters hate excuses. I believe, and Brock, you've worked for several monsters. Yeah. What's the negative of working for a monster, man? What's the negative of working for a, for for a guy like me? Uh, that that's a, pro- a self-proclaimed a monster, hey, not a self-proclaimed sociopath, but a self-proclaimed. And I'll monster. just say this about you and, and about all the rest of them is is that you know, you, you, the the monster doesn't care the means, but at the end of the day, we've had this discussion. You know, when we finished a TV show, somebody said something about putting another one on. I looked at you and said, "Do you think that I just sprinkle yeah. fairy yeah, dust yeah, on yeah, this?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and there's like there's just like all this behind the scenes. So I think there's a level of. Do you know what I just had to do to make that happen? And then you just keep doing it over and you do it over and over. Now, here's the challenge. Uh-huh. When it comes to, to the person and the employee, you're not always going to find people to make stuff happen. That's right. And that that's the I think that's the rub for the employee because they've got an opportunity. I think for an employee to work with somebody that wants to go to the moon, that wants to go to the mountain, there's some advantages of working with people like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And... For the monster, I think they have to embrace, too, that they've got to kind of collectively work together. If not, 
then it's just going to always be the monster going towards his or her own dream, mm-hmm. and then the employee's going to move off. So yeah, I think but, there's got to be some collaboration. Because you can't get to the multi-million dollar level many no, times on your own. No. It's a team right. sport. Right. And and I think all, you know, you hear this, the, the, the tide rises all ships or whatever. When you get on the boat with a monster, mm-hmm. he, there are a lot of benefits. There's a lot of negative. Right. But the benefits are this. I think you should use the experience of working for a monster as a learning laboratory. Right. Suck out. You know, I think about Lauren, 26 years old, my assistant. Because she's working for us, she's going to be able to get her own show on our network. Right. She's been able to get access to people she wouldn't have access to. Sure. It's opened her up to a whole other world. And what I think will happen is it will actually accelerate her sure. career. Yes. And so so the benefit of working for a monster, when you sign up on somebody else's team, you sign up to play by their rules. You need right. to know that. That's okay. Right. And they may have some crazy rules, but that's their rules. Steve Jobs had some crazy <laughs> rules. Okay. Now, if you don't like it, start your own company. Yeah. Okay. But suck every ounce of this experience out and focus on the traits that you admire. Leave the rest. Suck it out. One day you may be in their position and you are the monster because the great number two becomes the great number one. Let me give you a little kryptonite and then we're going to get you out of here and come back in the final segment and close it out. Okay, here's the deal. Your kryptonite is you don't like to be challenged. And this is a big problem if you work for a monster because right. they are going to challenge the teetotal hell out of you. <laughs> they are great at finding a button to push. You would rather back down than stand up to the task at hand when you work with the monster. And this is going to be a serious problem for you because the monster is going to push you in ways right. that you don't like. When we come back in the final segment of the Super Code Show. We're going to give you some tips if you do work for a monster on exactly how you can do it. You're watching Coach Michael Burt, the Super Coach, and the Optimizer, Jerry Maguire agent at Brock Patterson. Hi, I'm Coach Michael Burt. I'm the Super Coach. That's a cross between a former championship coach who has an entrepreneurial mind. You know, I started coaching at 15 years old, was coaching at a large high school at 19 and a head coach by 22. By 31, we'd won a championship in over 220 games for about an 80% winning record. Along the journey, I learned some key important things that can help you as a coach out there. I put most of that in a book called The Anatomy of Winning with Coach Rick Insale, 10-time championship coach and Hall of Fame coach. Also put it into a book called The Inspirational Leader, How to Be a Leader People Choose to Follow versus Have to Follow. And my very first book I wrote at 25 years old, Changing Lives Through Coaching, because I think a good coach can change your life. As coaches, guys, we want our players to get better. Here's my question to you. When's the last time you got better? Pick up a copy of any of my books at CoachBert.com. Welcome back to the Super Coach Show. We believe one hour can change your life. We believe everybody needs a good Super Coach. And I'll tell you what else everybody needs to do. Join me for my Person of Interest Mastery Academy, March 26th and 27th. This is where you spend two days with me, and I teach you every single strategy we've ever come up with in how to become people of interest. Now, this is important because monsters and monster producers elevate their status. Sure. And you can drive some crazy perceived value. This is one reason I do all the shows that I do. Right. Write all the books I write, speak at all the events I speak at. This two days can totally change your deal. It's the Person of Interest right. Mas- Mastery Academy, which licenses you to become <laughs> a certified Coach Burt trainer. You could teach it in your material and in your county, in your city, at your company. Yes. And trust me, baby, this is two days with me. We have dinner that night, and uh, we might even put you on a sprinter if you don't try to steal it and it's ride intense, around Murfreesboro. Man. And take you over to the Bonefish for dinner and spend some personal time with me. That's a big, big experience. If you're serious about your business, you need to sign up for this. Brock, let's give these folks some takeaways. Let me let me talk about this show. person yeah, of sure, interest sure. real quick. So so you know, this is this is a game changer. I was talking to one of our uh, mastery students from last summer on the phone before I came over here, mm-hmm. and he you know I asked about you know his production and and where he was in sales, and he said you know I'm not where I'm at, and and I said. You know, well, why not? He said, you know what I'm not doing? I said, what's that? He said, I'm not doing what I was taught back last mm. July. He said, if I would just follow that roadmap and that blueprint, I would be exactly where I'm at. And I said, well, why the hell aren't you doing it? And his his response was, you know, I just, 
I got to find the engine. So it goes back to the engine. But he said that's the solution right there. First yeah, you, if you want to attract business to you versus chase it, then then here's the deal. You got to become a POI. That's a person of interest. That is the person other people want a piece of and cannot live without. That's around one of my best-selling books, Person of mm. Interest. It's a great two days. It's coming up in March. Come to Tennessee and spend a couple of days cool. with me. That's a $2,500 investment. If you're serious about your business, you'll come and get licensed yeah, that's right. in it. That's right. right? Yeah. Now, let's finish this thing up. I got four tips for you if you work for a freaking monster. Now, we've defined monsters as legendary creatures that combine multiple skill sets to dominate a market. We've also said they right. could have some sociopathic tendencies, some psychotic tendencies, some cray-cray tendencies, some serial tendencies. They're, they're out there. And, you know, Matt Monero said this to me once. Yeah. Our buddy, Matt Monero, who I'm coaching in how to be a person of interest. Sure. He, he's, now, here's tells you something. This guy's running a $100 million company. Right. And I'm coaching him on how to elevate his status. Right. Now, he told me this one day. There are certain people, Coach, that just play at a higher frequency. Mm. And when I think about that frequency, the very first thing I thought about was Maslow's self-actualizers. Mm. There's 17 traits of a self-actualized person. In some ways, monster producers, these legendary mm-hmm. creatures, are are playing at a space right. that is that is very very sure. high. Yeah. They're playing right. at a very very high space. So when you think about this, here's what I want to ask you. There's four things that we will take away from this show. Okay. okay? Number one is: Do I want to get better and be challenged, or do I want to be left alone and, and be complacent? Right. So that's a big question for you. If you want to be left alone and be complacent <laughs> and and yeah. go to work and go to a job and struggle through a day, then you don't need to work for a monster, man. Right. I, I mean, I think about a certain, you know, when, when college coaches, I just saw my buddy Matt Insel beat Kentucky last night, uh, and that was a huge win because oh, yeah, he beat his former big. mentor. Right. Most college programs are, monster, are run by monster producers. Mm-hmm. They're making 400 to 400,000 to a million dollars a year mm-hmm. to coach to do one thing, win games, right. right? Now, when they go to hire, guess who they hire? Non-married, no kids, people that work 80 uh, hours yeah. a week. Yeah. They're married to their job. Yeah. yeah. When I think about working for a monster, you can check with Lauren K Hudgens, my assistant, and ask her when she gets messages from me. She may get them at 2 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock. This morning I was up at 4.30. I had ideas. Hey, I like this. I like that. She may get them on the weekend. Same right, for you. Right, right. Is that the engine don't stop. It just rebuilds, mm-hmm. okay? Second one, this is entirely about core values and shared values. Right. Monsters right. value work. They value production. They value uh, the... the uh, domination. Mm-hmm. They value they want to be somebody in the world. They value status. So if you don't believe in those things, there again. Right. And if you're the monster, you need to align yourself. Remember when Steve Jobs, if you go back and watch the Jobs movie, when he's building the Macintosh, what he did? He walked around through the company and hand-selected oh, yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. And he always had a philosophy. A players hate to play with B players. Mm-hmm. So he walked around and said, you with me. Yeah. What are we doing? Yeah, right. We're building right. the Macintosh. Okay, number three. Place the monster in his or her strength zone. You got to understand what they are and what they're not. Now, I said this to Lauren today. I'm a great coach, but I'm a lousy manager. I hate managing people. So I can be a great coach right. and a lousy manager. You, you see what I'm saying? And I think people need to understand if you're working right. with a monster, yeah. understand what they are and what they're not. Right. There's certain things they're great at and there's certain things they're bad at. Goes and, back to that I, that D and that I. Yeah. 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 There's put put yeah. the if you really want to get this right, put yeah. them in their strength zone. Right. And just understand that when they get out of their strength zone, they don't have that superhuman. They're very right. weak in certain areas, I guess is what I'm saying. They they're weak in areas and they're strong in areas, okay? And the fourth one, monsters are just people. They're mm-hmm. just right. people. They have feelings, they struggle, they have insecurities, just like you do. Make the backstage sale to let them know you are fighting for them. Now, that's important. Brock, what's the biggest takeaways you took away from today's show? Number one thing, be selfish. Mm. And I am not the type of person that would ever tell anyone (laughs) to ever be selfish. But if you're going to work with a monster, 
right? They're already selfish. Mm -hmm. You might as well be selfish yourself. Learn as much as you can. Mm -hmm. I mean, take everything you can away. Build the contacts, build the networks, get the experience, learn, 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 grow, 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 and be selfish. Because at the end of the day, if you're doing what you need to do to help the monster get to where they're going, then you're going to get what you want. That's right, and you are. I really believe if you will latch on to a monster and see it as a learning laboratory, suck out the experience, make it through it, I really believe you will learn so many valuable things. I, I almost went to work for Covey when I was 25 years old through an internship. And, and that role through that internship was to travel with him Mm. and watch him present all over the world. And the only right. reason I didn't was because I was already a head coach and it was a free, it was a non-paid internship. But I think what would I've learned following right. that monster for a year and sucking out that experience, what kind of advantage would that right. have given me? Right. If you want to be a monster, yeah. go to coachbird.com, click on monsterproducer.com, and every week we come to you strong on the Wit Nation at 3 p.m., whatever it takes, baby. And that's what a monster is willing to do. Yes. They're willing to take it all the way. I'm Coach Michael Bird, the super coach. Everybody needs a good coach in life. Brock Patterson, optimizer. Go out there this week and be legendary creatures that dominate a market. Hey, guys, Coach Michael Bird here. I believe everybody needs a coach in life, and that's why I'm inviting you to join me in the Big Apple, baby, the Monster City on the planet, New York City, April 17th and 18th. Spend two days in an immersion type experience with me at my Monster Producer Summit. I'm gonna teach you the seven frameworks of a monster producer. I'm gonna teach you how to take monster action, a monster explanation of services, monster selling system, how to get monster attention, how to keep your monster swag, and ultimately how to build a monster Enterprise for $499. Join me at the Sheraton New York City Times Square for two days, eight hours. Spend some personal time with Coach if you're serious about being a legendary creature this year that dominates every field by combining multiple skill sets. Go to coachbert.com or email us at info at coachbert.com to sign up for $499. Two days with me. This will be a 